Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter back with another video on Soul Sacrifice Delta. In this one, I want to go over one of the many aspects of the post-game enjoyment to be had in this game, and also just my gift back to the community. As small as it may be, everyone who is still playing or has played has been nothing but generous to me, uh, both on the Discord and just with their time, their um, wisdom, and everything else. This is my current sorceress. Doesn't she look great? I am using the, um, where is it, the rain mints. I'm using the night ones, and because I've I've uh, sacrificed 100 monsters uh, with this outfit, I unlocked color H, which is black. Um, if I saved 100, I would get color G, which is more like a white. And then if I use either one of those, uh, and I do the same thing, like I hit this with black, and I uh, sacrifice 100, I'll unlock gold. Uh, but I do love the black outfits, and I did do... A blank page to get these awesome almost uh Cetus uh, monster hunter <laughs> like Diablo's horns I love them so what I wanted to talk about in this video is the different sigils um, so obviously as you try to get further in Alice's dungeon or you want to get better um, sigils so that you can take on more difficult quests because the scaling does go way up you're gonna want to be going for sigils the problem is, is that the game, like Monster Hunter, doesn't exactly tell you what sigils are next. It only tells you once you unlocked the ability to earn it. It then tells you what you can do. For example, um, like Puncture Sigil 2, Spear Magic 2. I've unlocked the ability to earn it, but I and then I could check. Okay, I need a Werewolf Life Essence Plus and a Cyclops Life Essence Plus. I need two of those. So that's anywhere from like, what, a uh, two star to seven star or whatever. Uh, quest, something that gives out silver is probably a good one. Um, that would be a regular drop from saving them. Um, so that's great. Um, but if you notice, I don't have... I do have Puncture Sigil 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so I have all of them unlocked. Uh, but you wouldn't know exactly why I have them unlocked. And that's because for the weapons ones, they're tied to your intelligence. And they're also tied to how many times you've used the weapon. Um, so as long as you've used the weapon a lot of times and you have the intelligence... You can see all the way up through to level 7. You can just skip these smaller ones if you want. And just go after these two. Of course, for these though, you do need the precious plus plus plus. Which are only earned through extreme quests. So that's difficulty 11 to 15. Um, and as you get closer to 15, or if you have a special raging monster, which is a rare state it can be in. Um, you get a higher chance of getting. This is like the pallium of the game. Um, but the effects are certainly worth the grind. And the grind is what's fun, because you start to learn the monsters really well. The problem is, is that a lot of these sigils require specific things. Um, for example, you know, sacrificing a certain NPC or whatever so not. So what I did is I went through the Japanese Wikipedia, which is actually very... Um, I mean, we had the official guidebook released here. It didn't cover all the DLC, but they had a really good thing to work on. And the fans did a really good job of cataloging everything for Delta, because you have to remember that things changed between the base game and Delta, like the conditions for some of these sigils were different, and so not. Um, and I also went through some other resources, and I translated and made a complete database on how to get every sigil in the game. So this is great if you just want to peruse it, you want to you know think out builds, you want to think about what you want to unlock, what's available. Um, it's really fun to just go in there and look. So if you are playing the game or thinking about picking it up, uh, do feel free to download it. I have a link for it in the description down below. Um, it is a live Google Doc, so you can just use the web version if you want to bookmark it. And that way, if I do any changes, but I doubt I will, um, you'll be able to see those and always get the most recent version. Uh, anyways, this is my give back to the smaller community, so thank you guys so much. And for this video, what I want to do, um, because we're talking about sigils, is sort of talk about the blood build. So blood is by far the most powerful build in this game and it will kind of spoil you it's not as fun as a lot of the other builds uh, the other builds can get very creative um, like stasis magic and stuff like that is very interesting um, and there's lots of reasons to play different types of builds but if you just want to be efficient killing um, then blood there's probably nothing more powerful it's like the long sword of soul sacrifice delta and because of the way that they do heart sigils you're going to be running running it with sanctuary not uh, Avalon. So right now I do have uh, Sanctuary on. Um, for my build, all I'm doing is I have the Chthonian Claws Plus and also the Princeling's Claw Plus. 
I did do a recent post on the Reddit to let people know that if they did have the U.S. version of the game, um, as long as they have access to a valid U.S. credit card, they can go onto the website for PSN and add it to their account. And that way, when in the game they go to download it, um, they can just download the online pass for free. If you don't have access to a U.S. credit card, then I don't know yet a solution. Um, but that DLC quest, man, with the Chthonian Claws is great. Um, but the actual highest DPS is something that's earnable, so if you don't have this for some reason, don't feel bad. Um, it's the Cat Sith Claws, uh, which can be kind of hard to get because you got to break uh, the parts, but it is technically the highest DPS because it has very low health drain and it has very fast attacks compared to this one. Uh, and these never run out, so obviously they're perfect for Alice's uh, dungeon. Um, and also because they never run out and the setup is somewhat pretty good, they go really well with the Black Right Berserker, um, which allows you to damage and suck in enemies and hit them with your brain, which I'll use. And the only thing that you don't, you get as a uh, sort of a, what do you call it, a, a con, is afterwards you won't be able to see the names or icons of your sigils. But at this point you probably understand the order in which you have them laid out, so it's not going to be an issue. Anyways, I'll show you that. So, in this video, I think what we're going to be doing is going after Bahamut. Uh, so, Bahamut is the one invader in this game that does not have his own quest. If you notice over at Vidyaro the Reader, she's the one who will give you um, all these wonderful rumors, depending on what you've done in the game. So, if you notice, uh, if I go down here, like Jack-O-Lantern, Life Essence, I've gotten uh, three of them. If I get another two... Then she'll give me a rumor that will help increase my odds of getting a plus sigil from it. Uh, and so on. And it just keeps getting up and better and better as you defeat monsters. Uh, you can tell I was... Uh, where is... Is there any boss I did a lot? Well, there is the Emperor. It took me a while um, to get his plus 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 for the blood sigil. Um, so I killed 14. Um, I saved 14 of him. Uh, so now, anytime I, if I do it two more times, I will get a rumor... It's only good for one, but it will uh, give me a slightly increased chance of getting a plus plus sigil. Now, the reason why Bahamut is so cool is that he has the ability uh, to give you, let me go down here, right here, these arc fiends that works for everybody, and it gives you a slightly better chance of getting plus 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 sigils. So these are very nice. And there are some sigils that are unlocked by fighting Bahamut, and he has some really cool spells. So you may be asking yourself, well, how do you run into him? Because you can play the entire game and never run into him because he generally only appears during the extreme quests. Well, if you go to Oryx the Whisperer, you can go and give him just additional gold or whatever offerings you have, and he'll give you a random rumor. So if you notice, like, uh, some of these I have a lot of. I did give him a whole bunch, though, the other day. So it, it's actually, uh, I have less than I did the other day. Uh, plus, I was uh, buffing up my NPCs. I had, once I had like 60 of the same golden sigil, and I gave them all to an NPC to buff them up to Affinity 6 right away. Uh, but let's just give them something random here and see what we get. And what you basically want to do is be hunting for a Bahamut uh, rumor. So let's just give him some stuff. All the stuff he gives you for the gold ones are actually quite good. Um, so don't feel bad. Again, you can only have 127 rumors at one time, which I find a little disappointing. Uh, so you are going to run into areas where you just don't... You got to get rid of something that you're not using. Oh, sorry. That was a bronze one. That's not going to give me what I want. So one of the things you'll notice here is some of these have... It's called Rage, and it says Monsters L. So they're obviously when you're fighting a monster, they can become enraged, which is just a state in which their eyes turn red and they get very angry. They change their attack patterns, just like Monster Hunter. But they also is a random state that they can be in at the very start where they're fuming with energy. It's almost like a hyper monster uh, and they are a rage version. They're much harder, um, but they also have much higher payout rates for plus plus plus. So you'll run into them a lot in Alice's Dungeon once you get into the lower floors. Um, but Rage Monsters are a great way to try to increase your chances of getting the plus plus plus. So this is actually a really good one that we might utilize.
I just love how there's so many uses for all these sigils. You can use them to generate, you know, blank page quests. You can use them to buff up NPCs to make them S rank. You can give them back to this guy to get rumor notes. Ooh, here we go. So he gave us the special effect. Bahamut appears large, and it also has a high probability of causing the monsters to be raged. So I think this is what we're going to use. It only works for one. So right now I am using a 99-1 build. So if you notice, I still only have 100 like attack, which is like default. But I've got like 721 defense, and I can boost that up to like 900 if I really wanted to. One thing that I am putting on here is a thing called the Salvation Amp. So what this allows you to do is gives you Salvation uh, Amp. You in here says user is filled more easily filled with purity. And this basically increases your chances of getting a plus 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 or a rare um, life essence when you save a monster. There's another way to get this, which is just with the visual one. I don't actually have to be given up uh, my other stuff. I'll show you here which is the Holy Seal. So if we're at level 95 life, we get the Holy Seal one. So if we put that on, you'll notice that our appearance changes to this. <laughs> it's really uh, kind of wacky looking. Um, or we can go ahead and go all the way to the Divine Arm six, which requires 99 levels of life. So this is like all in. And what that does is unlock the ultimate Holy Seal two. So um, it just changes, like, for example, here when you, it says Divinity, Holy Power Crystallize is shaping your whole body, so it changes your appearance. And Salvation Amp. As far as I can test, Salvation Amp does not stack. So having, like, two, three, four, or five of these things on is not going to change yourself. And here's what you look like when you are 99. It's pretty cool looking. However, I was enjoying seeing my actual hunter in their appearance. I didn't want to look like this. Um, so I was giving up some power in order to keep my visuals. First, let's read about Bahamut, and then actually let me show you the Naked Emperor, because that's a fun hunt. Um, it's not necessarily something I need right now, but it's gonna be fun. So let's go ahead and read the lore behind Bahamut, which is actually related to the Lizard Man. If you remember, the Lizard Man were sorcerers that were trying to gain eternal life, but failed uh, through the Black Rite called Elixir. There once was a king who sought eternal life. To satisfy his ambitions, he dispatched a band of his men who discovered the ancient rite of Elixir. The offering required for the rite of Elixir is not one that ordinary men can readily comprehend, for it requires the sacrifice of the self. There are many who fail to carry out the rite, unable to completely abandon the notion of self, and become monsters as a result. These wretches are known as lizardmen. Amongst their ilk is an extremely rare kind that has adopted a rather strange behavior. They attempt to assimilate the precious monsters called Arichalka within them. Those are those little slugs. It is said that this is not a form of predation, but rather they are intentionally allowing the Arichalka to parasite them. Though the reason for this is unclear, there are a few theories. One such theory is that although the lizard men have lost their selves, their obsession with eternal life yet lingers, and they remain motivated by the meager remnants of their ambition. The effects of Elixir are such that Lizardmen have attained something very close to immortality, although not without its flaws. Due to their failure to completely cast off the shell of self, they still suffer from the fragility of a body made of flesh and blood. In this way, they aren't as different from ordinary humans as one might think. To attain true eternal life, they must address the fragility of the body. In fact, just by doing so, their original desires would be practically fulfilled. This is why they need the Orchicalca. By encasing themselves in hard shells like the Orchichalca, they can avoid death's scythe. The parasite Orchichalca within the Lizardmen absorb their host's intake, producing minerals. As a result, their bodies of these Lizardmen have become so hardened that one might think of them as more rock than flesh. It remains to be tested how aware the Lizardmen are of this. As it stands, the majority of the Lizardmen have lost all cognitive faculties for the most part, as a result of the rite. Some might say that the relationship between two monsters is more a form of symbiosis than parasitism. One can look at the more mundane but similarly mutually beneficial relationship between ants and aphids for comparison. The key point when discussing the symbiosis of the two monsters is the presence of the self. The sacrifice demanded by the rite of elixir is the loss of self. The lizard men are constantly locked in a struggle with their destroyed identities. On the other hand, the Orichalka are descended from snails with a grossly exaggerated sense of self. Perhaps it is even possible that the lizard men are ingesting the Orichalka to supplement their fading identities. 
Or perhaps it's possible that the Brazen or Chikalka have in fact chosen the Lizardmen as new shells for an even more grandiose display, as Arc Fiends. All this is theory and there are few hard facts, however one thing is certain, and that is at the name given to this rare bleed. The name of this new species born of Lizardmen in Orkachalka, which strikes fear and glee into the hearts of men and with equal measure, Bahamut. Which is an awesome flying monster, which you'll see. So we are going to go on and take on the uh, Naked Emperor, just because I fought him so much the other day that I think I can show him off pretty well now. So we'll be going to the Pervert in the Ruins. Pervert in Ruins, sorry. So the cool thing about Rumors is that when you quit a quest, it doesn't actually eat up the Rumor, uh, which is really nice. So we're going to go and tab over here using the right stick to Bahamut appears and Rage and Monsters as large. So I am using, just so you know for NPCs, I went to Sympatha, but I also specifically chose a new one outside of Samelia. I chose Iridian. She's got Divine Arm 3, which means that she's got decent healing. 3, 4 are really good. Um, but I wanted someone that had an Hail Bloom petal and also a Healing Bloom. This is really important because it allows them to heal you from afar. And having another one of those like group healing ones means that generally when I'm under 20% health, her or Sympatha, if you know Sympatha has a bunch of healing stuff, uh, one of those two are going to heal me. So this is really good for a blood build. Otherwise, you'll just have another NPC who's attacking and doing stuff like that. So let's start. Now, luckily, this quest, I already know the sign whether or not Bahamut's going to appear. There are some environmental traps, and if they're not there, then I know that he's going to appear. So I'll be able to back out right away, and you'll start to learn the signs. Or you could just go and trigger the monster, because Bahamut will appear immediately when you uh, enrage the boss, when you engage him. I will do all I can okay, so let's put an armor. Just think to yourself that you have, like, all I need is hero, uh, the song in your mind, and we could just be marching forward here. Dun, 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 dun. Get out of my way! Get out of my way! Okay, we've got Bahamut coming. The reason why I say that is you see that little blue thing on the left here? Normally there's an environment trap on this quest that's right there. And it's not there, which means Bahamut is going to bless us with his presence. We're going to go after him first, um, and we're going to try to break all his parts, and we're going to sacrifice him. Um, and hopefully the, uh, the Emperor won't give us too much trouble in the meantime. Let me go ahead and clean up a little bit before we start. Okay. Hello. Here comes Bahamut. He's a big flying lizard man. <laughs> So, let's go after Bahamut first. Where is he? No, not yet. That's the Emperor. Bahamut, where are you? Where the heck is he? Where did he go? Is he literally sitting on top of the Emperor right now? No. Oh, there he is. Hey, you. Come here. So we want to go for his head and his wings, which is why I'm using this higher platform here. There's not much he can do against it. Okay, my NPCs are not coming to help me out, which... There we go. So he starts out more as like a melee uh, monster, um, but then as he becomes lower in health, he'll start using his lasers, uh, which is one of the things that you can earn from him uh, later on, which is great. It's actually a specific build that utilizes uh, Bahamut lasers, which I really enjoy. Which I could show off later. So let's get his wings. You'll know when you have his wings, trust me. I think an Emperor is giving us some grief. Whoa, okay, my health is really low. There we go, thank you. 
Why do you fall down the moment I put up a platform? That's like aggravating. Okay, we busted off one wing. No, we didn't. We probably broke his head. Yes, we broke his head. Let's get off the wings. See, that's that healing pedal coming in handy, healing me from afar. Isn't that great? Come on, give me your wings. Okay, there's one wing off. You can actually hit the wings from the ground. I think I might do that. It's actually safer. So I won't be accidentally uh, hit, hitting the head and body doing damage. Okay, did we get it all on him? Did we get all his broken parts? I didn't get a message. Oh, his tail's still. Okay. There we go. So we destroyed all the <laughs> cursed parts on him. I actually do want to show him off a little bit um, before I just like smack it down with blood. Blood builds are very spammy, but they're very, very effective. So watch when he does his I'm a shoot my laser. And that's a laser that you can get, and it's very cool. And he does all these jumpy slam moves and combos, which is really nice. Not quite when you see so he does his like kick and... It's not what you probably, probably imagined when you heard Bahamut, right? Certainly manageable if you know how to keep your distance. Wait to see what he does. He's doing his kick combo. Getting some hits. Get out. Jump. What's he doing? He's going to jump. Hit the ground. Give us an opening. Kick combo. Woo. We get him upset. Yeah, he's enraged. So you see that like aura coming off of him? Kick combo. Sorry, buddy, you missed. One of the things I was talking about uh, recently on Twitter was just how this game is much more simplistic um, in its mechanical nature, like the actual button inputs and everything, and I think it gives it a kind of beauty, um, you know, where it's it's more about just paying attention to how you build out your character and just how you approach monsters than it is mechanical difficulty, um, because you only ever have to press a button to do a move. Um, so it, I think it makes it more accessible to more people. Oh, shoot. Um, if you were not Sanctuarium, you could not be tanking all these hits like I am, just so you know. You'd be dead. Okay, I'm in, I'm in trouble here. Is someone going to heal me, or should I heal myself? I'll heal myself. And some armor. Okay, let's finish off Bahamut. He's red. And then I want to show you the Emperor, <laughs> who is doing like WWF... Uh, body dives and stuff over here. He's funny. Okay, Bahamut is gone. Bahamut's his own character. He's not a Gemini, which means you're able to sacrifice or save him. He's also not the quest target, so you definitely want to get rid of him first. Um, then afterwards, even though he's got the lizard man face, he had merged with one of those EXP squ uh, snails to give him all those abilities. It takes a very long time for me to sacrifice because I'm only level one. Um, I can save very fast. I like how they should have show you the difference there, uh, depending on who you are. Come on, man. Because my, my two Sanctuary girls aren't going to come and help me out. No way. They're too busy with the Emperor, and they're not going to try to kill somebody, so... They are poning him hard, too. Man. Okay, Bahamut, this is getting kind of long. Come on. Thank you. Give me the plus plus. Come on. No, he gives me the plus. Okay, so now we have the Emperor. This guy is hilarious. So...
There was once a wise emperor, good and just, he was loved by all, the very image of a ruler the people desired. No matter the crisis, he stood firm. His subjects revered him with an almost religious fervor. But a curious incident arose in the castle town, more odd than curious, perhaps, and more obscene than odd. A woman walking alone had found her path blocked by a man, a man in a crown and a thick robe. This regal stranger then shuckled his robe and revealed what he wore underneath, namely, nothing. He was stark naked. A leering grin spread across his face as she shrieked. The incident had the empire furious. To think their emperor could do such a thing was impossible. His unimpeachable daily deeds kept his honor safe. His approval would not be shaken by a salacious rumor. The people united behind the emperor and began to hunt the culprit. It was some villain out to frame their emperor. A plot hatched out of jealousy at his skill and stature, surely. The emperor remained calm and resolute, not one to be shaken by a coward's ploy. Seeing this, the people loved him more. And why should he be shaken by this manhunt? He knew the culprit's identity all along. After all, it was the emperor himself. He derived pleasure from exposing himself to women. Which is not to say that he was an immoral person. He remained a just and dedicated man. As a result, his actions caused him no end of guilt and shame. Yet they were actions he'd willingly taken. Try as he might to resist, his urges won out. In time, it became a habit. Each night, he would steal into the city and repeat his perversions. He never hid his face, yet even so, his people never suspected him. Surely the villain framing their emperor was a master of disguise. Protect his imperial majesty. The more he revealed himself, the more they rallied behind him. As his perversion grew, so did their support. It was an inexplicable phenomenon. The emperor knew his acts were a profound betrayal of his subject's trust. It tore at him. But the more guilt and shame he felt, the more he was unable to resist the urge to bear himself. More. He had to show them more. What had first given a sexual thrill now became an instill a different feeling in him, one he could not express in words. His actions grew more bold. Where he'd target dark alloways before, he now chose busy thoroughfares. Inevitably, he was caught. The guards cut him down on the spot, and he was gravely injured. A crowd gathered, but their faith in the emperor was ironclad. Even seeing his face close up, no one believed it was he. No one truly saw him. Who was he then, really? It was only then he understood the true cause of his urges. He wanted them to know the real him. He'd strained himself for so long for his people to be worthy of the crown. Righteous in the extreme, strong in the extreme, he trembled under the weight of his royal persona, built up an idol with no substance. It was that idol his people loved, not him, and so he stripped bare, cast his crown and robes aside and he was just a man, as imperfect as any other. He had worries, he felt pain, at times he knew temptation, fear of betraying his subject's expectations threatened to stop his heart. It was enough to make him strip it all away. But even that had failed, even stark naked no one had seen him for the frail human being he was. Would no one ever know his true self? Then why was he even born, solely to give birth to an idol, hollow and perfect? It was then a strange vision appeared to him. A white chalice hovered there, speaking to his mind. If you would have your wish, offer a fitting sacrifice. The emperor made his wish. To shed the robes of royalty that clung to his even his bare skin, to become more bare than ever. A change took his body. He cast all that covered himself aside, quite literally revealing everything. Perhaps he revealed too much. It was certainly no idol onlookers saw. Every witness saw precisely what stood before them, a wholly exposed monster. This went far beyond nudity. His skin was transparent, showing every vein and pumping organ within. Despite their love for their emperor, his subjects now fled in terror. But the emperor made them look upon him by force. This was the real him, he exclaimed. But none had the nerve to look. He held them down, forcing them to take in his new form. Most died from fear. Their hearts stopped cold. Even now, his wish goes unfulfilled. Though he's exposed every part of himself, no one will look upon him. And so, the two bear emperor searches still for one brave enough to face him with that unflinching eye. Da -da -da -da. Now, one thing that's really interesting is that you can't see this on the Vita TV or the PlayStation TV. You can only see this when playing on a Vita. Um, but if you notice that some of those some of the text was red with sort of like this like dark outline those are ones that in the actual game you're able to touch and it'll give you battle hints on how to fight the monster so i'm going to go find it now in the 
Japanese version I have here, so I can tell you what it says. I do find that interesting and a little unfortunate that they um, didn't find a way to make that work uh, with the PlayStation TV. It was probably just a, a small oversight. Yeah, it says when he takes off of his cloak and he's bare naked, that is the moment that you want to strike. It says that if you hit his organs uh, when, he's, when he shows off his belly, uh, then you can get a big down on him. So I think the idea is here is when he does not have a robe on, then go after his stomach. And that's when you're able to hurt him. So let's try that out really fast. Now that we won't have the uh, Rage Diversion and we won't have Bahamut there to get in our way, uh, maybe we can uh, appreciate some of the differences a little bit more. Sometimes the hints are just a little bit more than, you know, uh, that. Um, and sometimes they're very helpful. Okay, you see the trap right there, that purple thing? That tells me that Bahamut's not here, so that's good. So we'll get to face the king himself, the emperor. So let's put on some armor. I didn't bring any buffs in this one just because I don't need it. Although ideally I would be using um, Behemoth fruits. I like to get rid of these things before the battle starts because they can get really annoying if you don't. I'm going to try to take care of this freeze one over here. There we go. And I think we're all good. So I'm going to show you what happens when we lure him over using the lady where he's going to want to expose himself. Get up on here so I can hit his. So he's going to come and he's going to be like, hey baby, check me out. You see him, he's like, look at that, look at that, uh huh, you like what you see? <laughs> it's a really big opening that you can get in the very beginning. I've never been able to really figure it out, like, during a hunt when he's not upset how to do it a second time. I seem to always miss it, but um, it's, it makes for a really powerful opening, though. We'll say that. Now he's got his robe up, and so it says to go for his organs. So go for his stomach. Oh, there's the down, see? So you can get the down if you're not afraid, and you go for him, and you go for his stomach, even though that's where he's shooting out his thunder. So high risk, high reward. It works. Let's do that again, shall we? Where am I? Constant gain shock. This is a hunt where actually the anti-shock, like negating uh, volt, might actually be really nice. Okay, well now he's got nothing on. So, whoa, he's upset. This is not a time I can use drawings again to lure him in because he's very enraged he's doing all these bursts whoa shocking he still has his head okay let's try and take that off that worked out great didn't it I'm just gonna wait for him to get up. I'm not gonna go down. Come on, come over here, buddy. Come on. 
gonna knock it down, but I'm gonna get in a few hits before he does. There we go. So we, we broke his head. So we've destroyed all his cursed parts, which... Whoa! <laughs> he does the... John Cena! Whoa! Jump down, Ultimate Warrior style. You gotta remember, I'm from the 80s is when I watched uh, wrestling, so... Ultimate Warrior, the Iron Legion, uh, the Bushwhacker, um, God, even, uh, there were some other weird uh, wrestling personalities that were around at the time. Uh, Coco Beware, you know. This is back when it was a little bit more fantasy, before guys in shorts became, like, the thing. They used to be the more generic types, and then I think generations later like the rock and stone colder like i never watched any of those guys so i don't know okay so he's not in race so is he going to be alert by this oh he is he's like check me out psych gotcha <laughs> he couldn't help himself Okay, I'm just going to save him because I know that my teammates want to save him. They're going to make it hard for me to not. You get a nice little shot there of the wonderful painting I think that Incubus drew. Nothing wrong with uh, some erotic art. It's still relatively safe and uh, the human body can be a beautiful thing, huh? <laughs> smack the uh, the snail in the back right beforehand. That would have been a really good chunk of EXP. Of course, I don't need it. Okay, so what did we claim from this wonderful run? First rate. Okay. And we got a bunch of uh, things to play with. Okay, to end this video out, I want, and I think I'm going to do this going forward, especially if you guys like this. Is I'm going to show you off the two different offerings that you can get from the monsters that we show in each episode. So for this one, we have Bahamut and we have the Naked Emperor. So let's start out with Bahamut. Um, there's two different ones. Uh, can I open up the menu here? We have the Ever Young Horn Plus, which um, is an other spell. Awaken the magic of Bahamut and focus it into stone light rays. It's a very powerful one with 10 casts. Uh, we'll get more casts as we power that up. And then we have the Ever Young Hardwing L, which is Veil the Body and Bahamut's uh, magic to perform an aerial blitz. So this is an aerial blitz move. So let's go ahead and check those out first, shall we? Woo! Hang on. <laughs> so we have a little goblin here. Um, he'll die really fast, though, but let's check out the lasers. Bzzz. It's hard to tell, um, but you can't move the lasers. They are kind of fixed in place once you shoot them. The idea is that they fire really far away. So you can be like way back on the other end of the arena and you can just shoot these things and they are just crazy good. So there's a build in which you do um, Avalon where you built up the other or whatever this thing is and you have like two or three of them and you just stand on the other side of the arena with level 99 magic and one in life. Then there's a sigil that gives you plus, uh, what is it? 150% attack, I think, but you only get 1 HP. But that's okay, because you're standing back on the other end of the arena just blasting everything to death while your NPCs are up there keeping them busy. It's a very weird and funny playstyle, um, but definitely fun if you're just looking for fun ways to farm. Very cool. So that's Bahumit's laser. Now let's check out its blitz attack. Although I don't think we're going to be able to hit the monster multiple times. I think it's going to die in like the first hit. Oh no, we got the we got to hit it. Okay, so it's just a standard blitz. I mean, it's nothing that much different than any of the other ones. I do love the little animation of like the what do you call it? Um, uh, the slide at the end. Yeah, so nothing horribly special there. For the emperor, we do have the debauch veins, which will awaken the uh, magic of the emperor, shredding foes with vicious claws. So this is a blood. Uh, so it's unlimited, and it's 45, and it's a volt. Uh, it'll be more powerful uh, if we bring this thing up to uh, black. And then we have the debauched mantle, which will awaken 
the magic of the Emperor to electrify the area with lightning. It's a roar attack, which I'm also kind of a fan of. Whoa, 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 whoa. what did I just do? I just, <laughs> I just, I just took it off on accident. Sorry. Uh, where's roar? Roar. I love that you get these, uh, these rooms that you can just practice uh, with. I really enjoy that. So let's start out with the roar. Whoa! That is cool. Do you see that jump upwards? Boom! Let's see. Can we charge it? No. Oh, that is so cool looking. Especially with this armor. Let's do it again. <laughs> I can't hold myself. Hey, buddy! From above! <laughs> Justice reigns from above. And here is the blood attack. Oh, it's just a nice little lightning. How many hits does that do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wow, that's a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we get to stop at midway. 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's nice. It doesn't eat up too much health either. If you look at my health up above, that's not bad. I really like this though. That's, that's cool and it's really wide. I wonder how far back I can be. Let me try all the way back here and see if it hits. Just to get an idea. The roar build is something that I want to try eventually. Yeah, it still hits them, even white. Wow, like how far back can we go this far? It's probably too far. Let's find out. Nope. <laughs> that works. How about if we go into the darkness here? This has got to be too far, I imagine. Yeah, so I think that's the uh, the limit. I think it's that black line there. What are you doing? Get out of here, buddy. I just realized that there's a piece of paper here. It's this whole practice area is made up of pages from the Ars Magica, probably. That's kind of cool. Push. What happens when you have chili at night? Boyah! Okay, my immature nature is coming out. I should stop. But those are the spells for these two arc fiends. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, do make sure, again, if you pick up this game or if you are playing it, to check out the link in the description down below. Feel free to bookmark it, download it, whatever. Um, it is uh, just a nice resource in my gift to you that shows you all the different sigils in the game. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any particular arc fiend you want me to cover later or sooner than later, let me know down in the comments. I do read them. And until next time, happy hunting.